Welcome to the podcast Tech Effect. The podcast is about testing and development in science and debates with industry experts. Today in this episode, we'll be discussing the topic of SDK or software development kits. What makes a good SDK, how to create, how to maintain and test them and what consists basically of the advantages and challenges uh, with it. Today in studio, we have Edis Gorbunos. Nice to meet you. Hello. He's an experienced Android developer who's worked in IT field for nearly 10 years. Yeah. For nearly 10 years and is climbing the ladder and has actually reached the role of uh, technical director in Tesla Lab. So yeah, it's a pleasure to have this type of guest at the uh, podcast. Uh, why did you choose to work in IT? Well, I'm a very creative person. I really like uh, making music and drawing and stuff like that. So being creative is uh, a part of being a developer. I think if you want to be a good developer, you have to be creative. So I found this field uh, when I was a child. I used to make small, stupid programs, and I really enjoyed that. And that's why I'm here. You had this a lot of years of expertise if you started at a young age. And how did you get to where you are now? So it all started in, in uh, high school. So we had programming courses there. So that's how it started. I started to create uh, web pages and small uh, flash movies. If you remember that old dinosaur called F Flash, that was really fun. Yeah, that's how I started. Then, of course, I moved to the university and and yeah, during my first year there, I started to work here in TDL in Tesla Lab. And uh, did you find Tesla Lab by yourself or Erwin's or, or Andre's approach here? Now my dorm mate next door was working in Tesla Lab, so he uh, saw my good grades and suggested me to join uh, Tesla Lab working as an uh, Android developer. So you had you mentioned a lot of different hobbies, right? Like making music and uh, you had dancing and I also know that you like Lindy Hop. But why did you exactly choose the IT over all of these? You could go on a different road because they all need creativeness, right? Yeah, of course, but uh, you can't make much money if you're like a musician or a dancer. So IT field is, uh, I think it's the most uh, profitable way, you know. So it's everything about the money. Obviously. Okay. <laughs> yes. Of course. And uh, why did you chose to be developer, but not a quality assurance engineer? Uh, being a QA or quality in engineer, um, it's not that creative if you ask me i really like uh, seeing something you know appear on a screen when you have written something it's like making a painting or making a new song so you have these building blocks and you put all of them together and then you see something work that's like magic yeah when you when you test it you don't have that <laughs> yeah especially um, if you're a manual tester or oh, yeah it's better to be automation engineer than of course. And uh, we know that you're an Android developer, right? Yes. Why and how did you go to Android developing, not front-end websites or, I don't know, maybe iOS even? So, as I mentioned before, uh, the colleague here at Tesla who asked me to join. Your doormate, yeah. Yeah, my doormate. And um, <clears throat> at the time, I was learning in high school in the first uh, semester we had java and android is based on java and uh, that was the thing i knew also the doormate was an android developer and he suggested to try that out at that point that it didn't even have a touch uh, screen phone so i had an old sony ericsson device and uh, i didn't know anything about mobile development so it was really fun uh what is an sdk as you uh mentioned before SDK stands for Software Development Kit. That's correct. Yeah, but in other words, um, let's explain it like this. So imagine you have a airplane model or a RC car, and yep. to make one, you need a kit, and that kit contains all the parts for that model. It contains instructions. It contains uh, maybe some tools, some instruments, and uh, and that's a real life uh, scenario for an SDK. It's a set of tools you can use to build something specific. And what are the advantages of SDKs and who, who benefits from the SDK itself? <clears throat> so if we know that if we don't have the SDK, the developers need to create code or 
from scratch, right? Well, that's that's a good and question. It's going to be a longer road to success. That's a good question. So the SDK usually comes with a framework or a platform. Uh, let's say for Android or iOS, like mobile devices, you have an SDK so that you that's the tool set for you to build apps for the dedicated platform. But you can have SDKs for different types of apps, different types of frameworks and uh, web pages and so on, so on. And who benefits? Everyone benefits. Uh, if you are the owner of Android, for example, you want people to make apps for your platform and publish them and so on to make their life easier and um, to have more and more apps on your platform. You want something that they can use without it. Well, it would be really hard to do. Okay. So you have SDK, you get more uh, developers with the SDK. Well, developers use the SDK to create more applications and it's higher, m more reach to people. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And the SDK is evolving. Uh, well, usually, uh, well, for Android, uh, the SDKs are evolving very fast. So you, you could learn how to program an Android, like let's say five years ago. And then after a few months, if you don't, you know, learn the new stuff, you will be very outdated. So you have to follow all the changes. Okay, but uh, can you make the or develop apps without an SDK right now? Or no one actually does that nowadays? Well, that's, there, there are two parts of this question. First of all, uh, there are multiple SDKs when you build an app. Mm -hmm. And the first, the basic one is the Android SDK. But let's speak about the SDKs uh, that are tailored for not developing the apps themselves, but to support some functionality. Let's say we have a library that um, connects to the internet and downloads you know, images or video files, whatever. And um, for that, um, a client or someone has created an SDK that you can use. And uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we need to you know, move away from Android SDK and talk about SDKs that are. The question was, can developer actually code uh, an app without the SDKs at all? So first of all, you will use the Android SDK to develop any app on Android, if we are speaking about Android. But you don't need any other SDKs if you just want to make simple applications. Next question that is, uh, if a developer uses an SDK, uh, does it mean that he knows less about coding? Stupid question, yeah. <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> that makes no sense at all. But if you think about it, th there are some questions that um, are more applied to programming in general, not Android, you know, uh, because you can develop like simple web pages without any SDKs at all. And uh, the fact that you know or don't know about an SDK, how it works. That doesn't change anything. Uh, you can you can make good performing apps without any SDKs at all. But uh, the more you know, the better. Um, I mean, it's like like that for everything in life. Why do companies decide to make an SDK? To reach broader audience. That's the simplest answer. Um, let's say a company has has um, a solution. Let's say for real time video streaming. And um, to reach a broader audience, you will have this SDK that's simple to use and everyone can access it and uh, yeah, just stream their own videos. Without it, you would have to, you know, um, connect to their servers and try to access uh, all the behind the scenes stuff. It would be really complicated and hard. It yeah. saves time though. And how did they actually prototype it? Usually that happens, well, from my experience, uh, everything starts with uh, a web prototype. So you create something for a web page. It's much faster to do. And then you try to find, you know, investors. And when you find them, then, well, then you upgrade it and create uh, additional SDKs for mobile as well. And how do they deliver it? Like, what's the life cycle about? Depends on the platform. Um, For example, let's take Android as you may mainly focusing on Android here. Yeah, uh, well, from starters, it's in if it's in the prototyping stage, then you would uh, deliver the SDK as a uh, binary. Um, 
you send it via email or whatever but later on when it's uh, ready to be released and uh, they're publishing it on usually maven or some other uh, type of platform and for how long do you need to actually maintain the sdk well uh, for as long as needed uh, if if the sdk works and if there are no issues at all that that happens like never but if that's true then uh, you don't have to worry about it but usually what happens especially on android you make an sdk you release it make it public and uh, yeah, after a year it stops working and then it's because android has been upgraded there are new android versions and you have to keep up with the updates so a lot a lot of things changes over time so you have to maintain it okay so the company decided to make an sdk and how do we uh, tdl our test lab how do we test lab are involved in this process in the releasing well yeah let's say in the release or in testing i don't know all oh, right, yeah. Um, well, let's say we have a client that is uh, working on SDK. They want to release this SDK, make it public. But if, before they do that, they want to assure that the quality is top notch and everything works as expected. Then they contact us and then give their their SDK to us. What we do is, firstly, we we make some tests. We create some demo applications and um, give it to testers. And uh, also, we write. Um, long reviews about how easy it was to implement this DK, what were the issues, what's working, what's not working, how they could improve that SDK, how they could improve the user experience using it and so on. And after everything is done and then uh, everything is cleaned up, they can publish and release their SDK. So basically they benefit from us is a long good feedback and they receive and they are they fixing the issues we found, right? Yes. Yeah, it's okay. better to you know fix everything before it's released are we helping them to fix the issues as well or are they just doing it on their own side yeah yeah we of course we are helping um it's well we have a very good team of developers here so if we find an issue we can easily debug it and then show the potential fixes for everything we find uh how can you integrate an uh, sdk that's the main question here that's a very broad question there is no uh, simple answer but well, usually how you integrate an SDK is well uh, let's say it's a prototype and um, you want to integrate it and there is no documentation well then that's hard then you have to figure it out on your own or contact the uh, developer who is making that SDK but usually that integration part is simple if, if that SDK is released it will have a guide on how to set it up and how to use it that's how you integrate it. Okay, and uh, should developers know like every single part of SDK or they should just know the building blocks? They should know only the, the building blocks. Everything comes uh, after, you know. If you want some very specific uh, edge cases covered, then, then you should know more. But if it's, you know, the simple stuff, then... Yeah, as you mentioned previously, we can combine uh, multiple SDKs for a project, right? Of course, yeah. So what would be your recommendation for a simple uh, startup project where you want to create, a, I don't know, messenger type of application for for uh, Android? So you want me to name an SDK that you can use for chat? For example. There are like hundreds of SDKs for that. <laughs> there is no, no one answer. Okay. Uh, I mean, everyone can make an SDK that serves as a chat. It's the most basic functionality you can have. Mm -hmm. Actually, if you ask me, I believe that most of the Android or any other mobile app uh, is a chat app. Let's take uh, Facebook. It's a chat app. You have a scrollable list of content. It's like chat. Everything is the same. Like all the apps are the same. You're always doing the same and the same and the same until you die. <laughs> If we compare Android programming to iOS, right? Which is better? No, well, controversial <laughs> question here. <laughs> there is no better or worse. Well, why we should choose Android development over iOS then? It depends on why, why should who choose like developer? Why why should developer choose the Android the language or you know platform? Why should developer choose Android uh, oh, language okay, okay, and Android it. as well? Yeah, over yeah. the iOS side. Uh, well, I will speak from my experience. So when I started to work here, I had a Windows a laptop. 
So that means I can't develop iOS apps. So that's that's how you choose it. <laughs> there is no good answer because it depends on what you want to make. If you have an iPhone, if you're, let's say you're a student, you have an iPhone. But it's easier to start on the developing on Android side yeah, than course. actually on iOS. Yes, it's you easier, need. but um, easier to uh, get access to the development tools, but um, the programming itself might not be uh, as easy as, as it is on iOS actually. Like, oh, are, are all the SDKs for free or can you actually like pay for some of the SDKs and they have better, uh, I don't know, processes or something like that? Of course, there are premium and there are free SDKs. Depends on what you want to achieve. Uh, most of the companies do sell their SDKs or they have these... Um, prescription uh, type of services you have to pay like monthly to use their SDK uh, like for example if you want to develop something on iOS uh, to use their tools you have to pay them you're paying for their SDK monthly makes sense not to me <laughs> on Android you don't have to pay anything well the Android is more like student friendly yeah yeah that's why a lot of Android developers are there Yes, but uh, there are not so many uh, senior Android developers. It's really hard to find them. Uh, so what are the main issues with the SDKs, main uh, problems or inconsistencies, and why are they good or bad? In some that's cases? that's a good question. But so the biggest issue uh, with SDKs is that they are usually uh, tailored to one platform. It doesn't happen always, but sometimes uh, when creating an SDK, uh, you create a proof of concept in web, like for example in JavaScript, you try to uh, find investors and one, once you do, then you try to make that same SDK work on mobile. And uh, the issue there is that you try to make it look the same and feel the same, but that's that's really wrong because the ecosystem on mobile apps and actually between Android and iOS is very different. So you can't have the same stuff be written the same way uh, for all these different languages. You need a more creative approach for each platform. Exactly, exactly. yeah. And, and because of that, some of the SDKs are really hard to use and they have a lot of stuff to be maintained and uh, they're not user-friendly because they're not made uh, for developers. Uh, you know, specific Android developers. That that, that sucks. <laughs> I hate when people do that. And uh, what would you suggest to them? Uh, what I suggest to, well, to everyone uh, who asks my mind about their SDK is try to make it, well, at least try to ask help from uh, senior Android developers. How would you imagine this SDK to work? And only then, when you have this feedback from an actual developer, you can make a really good uh, SDK. So if you want to make it for iOS, then go for iOS senior developer. Exactly. Et cetera. Okay, makes sense. So you get a nice feedback and input about that one. Yeah. Great. Great. So how user-friendly SDKs usually are? That's a good question. Uh, you know, some of the companies are making really good and easy to use SDKs uh, with uh, good APIs, but some of them are not actually to be fair most of them are really hard to use and um, i can uh, tell from experience uh, i've had to make some demo apps using the same sdk over and over again and uh, you know learning from that i realized that uh, it's easier to create a facade for such an sdk because you don't have to copy the boilerplate code over to all the other apps so what is facade? Can we explain it to you? Yes, in case of an SDK uh, where it's tailored, you know, for web, but then translated to Android and it doesn't work well, uh, usually what I do is create a facade. Facade is an, um, you know, top layer over the SDK. It's an API for their API that makes it, uh, you know, much easier to use. And it's tailored for Android specifically. So... Yeah, without it, you can always, you know, uh, use their implementation. But it, usually if you have to use the same SDK over and over again, it's easier to have this facade. 
that works for you. Okay, if we're talking about the facades, how would you create it by yourself if you did it? So when I create a facade for an SDK, and I have done this multiple times, uh, is I take their, you know, uh, implementation of what they have. I uh, hide everything they have behind the scenes. So I don't expose anything uh, their SDK provides. I translate everything from objects or, you know, specific classes that come from their code to something very primitive, like strings, integers, enums, and uh, so on. And then instead of having well, like multiple classes that usually are acquired, I have one facade that's a singleton. Uh, it has only uh, functions that require primitive uh, variables, uh, only uh, primitive flows. Flows are collectibles in Kotlin, if we are speaking, or we can use RxJava for observables. And we use that for callbacks. And uh, yeah, one init function that you call uh, in your application class to make it static and a singleton that outlives every every view changes and so on. Can you use these type of facades for iOS as well? Of course, but uh, they have to be made specifically on their platform, so by an iOS developer. So by facade, you mean that it's unique code approach for each platform individually, right? Yes. And we don't need a facade at all if the SDK is well made uh, but usually it's not the case, so that's why we add them. Okay, so facade is needed if the SDK is actually pretty bad, pretty poor, let's say like that. No, not poor or bad. Not user-friendly. Exactly, it's really hard to use them sometimes, and um, most of the SDKs require a lot of uh, code to be kept in memory, like different kinds of objects, and they have to outlive all the lifecycle changes of an app. And if you don't do that, you can have a lot of bugs. So what we try to do is, for a client, let's say, we create this facade and hide everything behind the scenes, and, and, and in there, behind the scenes, we cover all the edge cases, like uh, keeping everything in memory, releasing it timely, and so on. So basically coding, coding, creating a better example of the SDK so. Yeah. And sometimes, uh, you know, the client can take our facade and then uh, create a new version of their SDK and make a new, better API out of it. And what would be your advice to everyone who's working with SDK development or testing? Create these facades? That would be the main advice? Or there are several, many advices that you would recommend? A facade, I use this term um, when I want to describe describe a bad SDK. So if you want to develop a good SDK, you don't need a facade. You just need to make the API, you know, tailored for the specific platform, web, iOS, Android, and so on. So my suggestion is uh, contact, you know, senior Android or iOS developers before translating something from web to mobile. Uh, so what do you think uh, is the future of the SDKs? So there's always going to be a future for SDK development. So if you are a startup, and you want to make something that you can share with your clients and uh, in that case don't worry about it SDKs will be always needed and um, yeah whether it's mobile or web just go for it uh, so you've been working 10 years right yeah so if you compare your first year or second year to now how you see uh, how much has SDKs improved over yes these years everything has improved by a lot over these years um, First of all, the change from Java to Kotlin on Android was super good. I mean, I, I can't explain in words how good it was. Uh, there have been a lot of changes, but the latest, what we have now, um, well, the current uh, most common use case using MVVM development pattern, uh, it's really awesome, easy to use, very uh, user-friendly. Everyone can just jump in and um, learn it very quick. Can you describe what MVMM is for viewers? Yeah, that stands for model view view model. And uh, I can explain it briefly. So you have a few layers in your app. And one is the UI layer. It's something you see on the screen. And then you have this middle layer called view model uh, that stores all the data you want to show on the UI. And then after that, you have the model layer or repository classes, how we call them in development. And that's... Uh, everything uh, related to background tasks, networking, and, and stuff like that. Okay. 
So everything is separated in layers. It's really very, very easy to uh, unit test. And uh, it was a big issue uh, when I started to work. It was really hard to decouple these things. Everything was done on UI layers. So if you wanted to unit test something, it was really hard to do it. And what else has changed over these years? Well, there is this new thing um, that's not that hasn't catched on really, not now, but uh, probably will soon. Uh, it's called the Compose, Jetpack Compose. And um, it's very similar to what iOS have now. It's declarative programming. Uh, you don't have to have XML files to describe how your layout looks for the UI. Now you write everything in code. It's good, it's very performant, uh, but it's not that hard to integrate now. Uh, the biggest issue for me is the previews. You, you can't you can but it's really hard to understand how it will look together without you know writing a lot of code and i hate when you have to write a lot of code that's why we have these facades for sdk that helps us with simplifying things yeah uh, so and the last question here for in this podcast would be what life motto would you generally advise our listeners to live by i have this one quote um i've been you know using for years now i really like it i i can't say it's a good advice but uh, here it goes um you are the architect of your own destruction and it's very sad but true and uh, by saying that what i mean is always live your life at the fullest you know enjoy it and do what you like so if you're happy where you are just stay there don't try to change a lot but if, if it's not working out for you, you know that don't be afraid, just try different things. Thank you, Eddie, for finding the time to join our podcast. It was very insightful discussion where we talked about the SDKs, uh, about facades, how to maintain them, uh, test them. So yeah, if you enjoyed listening to this podcast episode, feel free to follow our podcast on Spotify, uh, also on YouTube, where we'll be publish more episodes with experts from different software engineering fields. And uh, if you have any comments, leave it in the comment section below if you're listening it on YouTube. And uh, yeah, thank you very much and uh, let's keep advancing your skills. Thanks. Bye. Bye.